Hello, David Moore with IRA Advantage, and today we're going to discuss how self-directed IRA investments work. And I guess we better start off. We just finished a video talking about traditional and self-directed IRAs. Uh, I guess the first thing I'd like to say is, is self-directed IRA is not a legally defined term. It's just a term that describes an account that allows people to do what they want to do. So in our world, a, a truly self-directed IRA is one that allows you to make any investment the law allows. You've heard me say this before, but IRAs can buy anything other than life insurance contracts, collectibles, or stock in a sub S corp. 401k plans can literally buy anything other than collectibles. So rarely is an investment a problem for somebody. Typically what causes problems is transactions between or for the benefit of a disqualified party. That's what would you know, cause a, 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 an investor to potentially commit a prohibited transaction. So when we have a truly self-directed IRA, we need to be diligent to make sure we're going the right direction, that we, we never uh, write a check or enter into a transaction until we're clear on what's going on there. And as far as how these accounts work, you've got really two choices if we're talking about self-directed IRAs. You've got a, a basic self-directed IRA, basic our term, I guess I should say. A basic self-directed IRA means that we're really just going to move the money you want to use in this capacity from custodian A that won't allow you to make that investment to custodian B that does allow you to make that investment. A basic account requires you submit paperwork with a custodian, you, you, you submit the investment to them, along with uh, typically an investment authorization, some type of prohibited transaction questionnaire, and then whatever's required for that given investment. Each custodian's going to have a different list, but upon their receipt, their review, and their approval of that investment, they will then make that investment on your behalf. And, and if you look at the owner of that investment, it's typically going to read something along the lines of, ABC Trust Company, CFBO, custodian for benefit of, if it's my investment, David Moore, IRA, number, whatever it might be. And, and that's, that's the least expensive way to do it. Uh, most any custodian, you can go to their websites, create that account to do that type of investment. So it, it's inexpensive and it's easy to do. Uh, the downside is investment takes time and, and it is going to be uh, subject to that custodian's approval of a given investment. The other option is a, a truly self-directed IRA using what's called a checkbook IRA. And, and for lack of, of a you know, better explanation, I think that the best way to explain this to people is, is really we're creating an IRA-specific limited liability company that's being inserted between the custodian and the ultimate investment. So instead of the custodian having paperwork submitted and their approval and their investment into that, that ultimate investment, they're going to make an investment into a limited liability company that our client is typically the manager of. So the member of that trust or the member of that limited liability company is a trust company for benefit of a given IRA. It could be a series of different LLCs. It could be a series of, of IRAs. It could be a series of, of individuals. Any combination of things can be in that limited liability company. Depending on how it's structured, depending on whether those members are disqualified parties or not, that entity may become static at some point. That's a whole other conversation to have. But by inserting that IRA-specific limited liability company between the trust company and the ultimate investment, putting our client in as the manager of that limited liability company, our client has the power of the pen. They can literally make an investment by writing a check. So if they wanted to go buy real estate, for example, they're just going to write up the offer between the seller and the limited liability company and our client as manager of the LLCs going to write a check out of the LLC's account into escrow and take care of that earnest money. Go to buy it, same thing happens. Uh, during time of ownership, everything goes in and out of the LLC. When you go to sell it, you're just going to enter into a listing agreement with the, tax, or with the uh, real estate broker as you normally would and uh, sell the property. The funds just go straight back in the LLC's account. And I want to stress before I, I, I leave you today that we're not pulling money out of an IRA to make these investments. We're just changing the investment vehicle. So instead of having it in, in let's say, a Wall Street institution, we're going to move those funds that you want to use. Once again, not all or nothing, just what you want to use in this capacity. Move it to the new custodian. The custodian makes the investment in the LLC. The LLC then makes all those investments. You're not pulling money out of the IRA. You're just changing the way it does things. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. I encourage you to call anytime you've got questions or concerns on this. 
And I look forward to speaking with you and having the opportunity to work with you soon. David Moore, IRA Advantage, IRAadvantage.com. Thank you.